Welcome to our podcast series, Talking with Traders, hosted by expert trader Garth McKenzie in London, from where he's interviewing various guests on the topic of trading. Welcome back to another season of Talking with Traders with me, Garth McKenzie. This is the sixth season of the podcast, and we're into our third year since the podcast began in 2020. Once again, IG have come on board as sponsor and agreed to fund this podcast for another season. We really are privileged to have such a global leader in CFDs trading as our podcast sponsor. Over the coming weeks, I'll be interviewing various guests from around the globe to bring you their market insights. I'll be digging in to find out what makes them tick, how they see the markets in the year ahead, and what techniques they will use to succeed in the markets. Some of the guests will be returning guests from previous seasons, and some will be new guests that I've managed to convince to join me to give up their time and share their insights. As we enter 2023, there's as much uncertainty as ever around where the markets may be headed in the next 12 months. We've just come off a horrid year for investors in 2022, where a typical 60-40 portfolio delivered its worst annual return in several decades. But what of 2023? Will the US lead the world into a global recession, or will the central banks manage to achieve a soft landing for the global economy? Will inflation come under control as base effects kick in and supply bottlenecks open up? Will US earnings hold up in the face of a weak economy, or will they disappoint? Will we see continued weakness in the US dollar? I'll be asking these and many other questions to my guests in the coming weeks. The idea behind these podcasts is for you to get a variety of views from a broad spectrum of market professionals. None of this is intended to be seen as financial advice, but it is intended to get you thinking and to weigh up what possible paths the market may follow in the year ahead. Please remember to subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast app. That way you'll be notified of upcoming episodes as they get released. Once again, thanks to IG for sponsoring this podcast for a third consecutive year. Thanks for joining me, and please enjoy Season 6 of Talking With Traders. All right, welcome back to another episode of Talking With Traders, and uh, many regular listeners will have noticed we've had quite a few international guests on the lineup recently. Now, this week's guest is uh, is a South African guest, but I guess he counts as an international guest because he is now living in London. He's a previous guest on the podcast, but at that stage, he was in South Africa. His name is Mike Ledwidge, trades for Storm Trading. Uh, Mike, we last spoke in January 2022, so that's going back about 14 or 15 months from now. And uh, quite a lot has changed in your life over that time. Welcome back to the podcast. And I'm looking forward sure. to having a conversation with you and catching up and hearing how, what's happened in your life over that time. It's certainly a different market. And I know for you, from a personal perspective, things have changed a lot as well. Sure, Garth. Uh, what a privilege uh, to get back onto your podcast. Um, I'm really honored to, to get a second uh, shot here. Um, we always yeah, give I mean, the, a... the good guys that made a good impression the first time a second shot. So welcome we, back. Um, yeah, no, I know. I had some some really uh, you know fantastic news. I'm, I became a father over the last uh, three months. So it's been quite a seismic shift in my life. Um, I welcomed a young son into the world in January, um, which has been yeah quite incredible. So I guess the sleep has been politely taken away from me, but uh, other than that, it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been amazing. So great to join you today, and uh, you know, talk a little bit about uh, markets and uh, and a bit of trading, which uh, which I, I love to love to always share with guys. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know we had a super conversation the last time. I, I listened to it before this podcast just to catch up on what we spoke about, and I know you did as well. And it was a great conversation. So I'm looking forward to more of the same this time. But obviously, with quite a different theme and knowing that you come at it from quite a different perspective this time around, from a from a personal perspective. Um, but also to know that the markets have changed dramatically from that time. I mean, when we spoke last, it was January 2022, the markets had just peaked at that stage. And I guess at that stage, we possibly didn't know that we were on the verge of, of what was a fairly aggressive bear market throughout 2022 in in the US particularly uh, and other parts of the world and we've had uh, quite a quite a rocky time since then 
Tell us a bit about the year. Um, you know, the backdrop has changed. The macro backdrop has changed quite a bit. How's the last year yeah. been for you in terms of trading? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's uh, it's been a market that has obviously been uh, characterized by central banks, you know, finally intervening. I think that's pretty much been, been the change. And obviously, um, you know, as a trader, day trader, uh, adjustingly, accordingly has been sort of you know the the way that uh, you've had to play i would say it's actually been quite a good last um year or so um we've you know we've we've actually you know i think there's been some fantastic opportunities provided you know you've had your systems in place and you've actually been able to sort of adjust and be be understanding of the change in in and, and sort of pivoting on, on on the change in the market um I think, um, you know, I think you've had to be very careful to pick your moments. I think it's been a market also that you can give back money very easily. Mm. And I think especially, um, you know, day trading, I think, you know, each day certainly has, you know, with a lot of headline risk, with a lot of narratives changing, um, you know, you are certainly really, your 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 discipline is tested. Um, and, and I think that, that you know, it, it, to sum it up, I think it is definitely a market for, for guys that are, are quite active, yeah. but are, are really selective in terms of what they're, what they, what, what they're playing. Mm. It's interesting um, what you say there uh, I, about day, yeah. day trading. Um, you know, I, cause my, my style of trading is not, I'm not really a day trader, I'm more position trader. And exactly what you said, trying to hold trades, trying to run winners has really been very hard in this market. And it's been a year where actually that you know common thing of run your winners, cut your losers has actually backfired in many cases. And I've found that in my own trading. A lot of the time you think, cool, I'm on a winner here. This is looking good. I'm onto something. You hold that winner and no sooner does it blow up in your face. And next thing you find you cutting it for a break even or a or a loss even. Uh, I know when we spoke the previous time, you said that you are a day trader. Your style is very much to go home, go to bed flat every night square. and yeah. go square yeah. and uh, and start the day square and then obviously trade during the day. So has your style of trading pretty much stayed the same over the last year then in that case? It's, it has. Um, and I, you know, I think that is maybe one of the reasons why, you know, sort of the, the I, I feel that because of, you know, sort of headline risk and all those things, I think it's it's something that's sort of been, I'll talk about it a bit later, but one of the edges that I have um, at the, at, in my trading and, and one, one of the things that I, I like to do in terms of refining edges, um, you know, it's been really, really, really challenging. I mean, for example, even if you look at the, the way China's played out, I think mm -hmm. you had towards the end of last year, you know, everyone was on that China trade. I think some some hedge funds and some guys, you know, made some serious money being long of China. And everyone thought, you know, you could buy the pullbacks. But then all of a sudden, you know, you have these massive drawdowns mm -hmm. and, and it's sort of, you know, the, the whole thing changes. Um, yes, I do can continue just to day trade because I feel that my, you know, each day I can come in with a blank canvas and sort of, you know, start again. And it doesn't uh, allow me to have any biases, you know, sort of, of, of prior days. And I think that is sort of the way the market is at the moment, because you, you know, we, you've got uh, these one day on one day off. So you have these yeah. huge buy programs and then all of a sudden they you know, they're out the window and, um, and you sort of stuck there. So, it is a uh, it is a very a market that you have to really pick your moments because you do um, you do sort of find yourself chasing your tail a bit and potentially over trading. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think I, I'm pretty uh, happy with with my the, my process and the way the the model I use um, is working out. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I want to get onto that point about well, over trading or not not over trading in a, in a moment. But just quickly to sketch the, the the landscape again, I suppose the last time we spoke, you said that you were pretty much like fifty fifty South African market versus offshore markets. Yes. Um, and and you were kind of leaning more and more towards going more offshore because there was a lot of opportunity. But I know when we spoke now, just before we started the recording, you said that you've been very active in South Africa. So you know, on, a, on, a, on a, a percentage basis or on a weighted basis, I suppose, what is your your involvement yes, in South 100%. Africa? 100%. Yeah. So I think when we spoke last, you know, I think uh, uh, there was um, – I had a huge, you know, sort of uh, excitement to, to be – 
more involved in the US and um but I think it sort of, you know, diluted my focus. And I think that is one of the big things also um, that I try to refine. I think, especially now, um, you know, having a little, maybe a little bit less time on my hands, I think it's really important to, to sort of refine this. So I would say I've gone to more of an 80-20. So in terms of my offshore trading, um, you know, it's pretty much st stuck to futures and maybe one or two good stock ideas where I can really see something happen. But I would say that a lot of it has been put more into SA where I can come up and formulate a plan on, you know, two or three stocks on a day that I would like to, to, to play in. Um, and, and those will obviously be judged on various characteristics. And I feel that by doing that, I can sort of, you know, apply my focus um, until, you know, we've got more artificial intelligence. So we can play 50, 40 stocks, which could be coming soon. But, but I, I would say, you know, as a, as a trader, as a human, um, that, that it is quite important, I think, to, you know, to really find and spend a bit of time in, in getting A-plus setups. And I think scanning the U.S. markets and the SA markets, it becomes quite overwhelming. And, yeah. you know, there's just but too much out there, you know. So yeah. I've been specialized in, you know, Southern African stocks for the last 10, 12 years. Um, and, you know, I think you, you want to keep to places where you're making money or, you, or you're winning, you know, where you are, where you realize that you can actually have a bit of an edge. Um, but we can, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of chat about, you know, SA stocks. And I think there's a lot of guys that are, you know, have feel that the liquidity and things like that aren't there. But I think, you know, the, still we're getting, I think, 60, 70 percent of offshore earnings. So, you know, there are international players through the yeah. SAJSC. Yeah. Um, and you, I think there are great opportunities. Um, so that's you know, interesting. Yeah, because I mean, one of the things I wanted to ask you is about the the, the thinning liquidity on the JSC. And I know it has its yeah. moments. There are days where it does quite a bit of volume. But been, if, if we just look over the last year since we spoke, there's been a lot of stocks that have left the market, just delistings, yeah. because mm -hmm. either uh, yeah, companies are, are, are moving to offshore exchanges, potentially in some cases, or otherwise, what we've also seen is a lot of the good company, the really decent quality businesses, the SA centric businesses that are uh, that, that are not able to attract the reasonable valuation are just getting bought out. I mean, in the last year, we've seen MassMart, Imperial, mm. uh, Distel recently has gone, Mediclinic's going to go soon. I mean, I know then there's others. Um, so the, the, the universe is shrinking yeah but i guess it has been a real graveyard for, yeah for a lot yeah. of stocks and it is quite sad to see you know things thinning out um yeah i mean we do you know you, you and i you know both living here in the uk when you it's quite sad when you when you look back and you actually you know look look at the attrition rate yeah. of some of these 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 listed stocks but you know i try i try to put a bit of a positive spin in you you look at some of the, maybe the bid vests and bid corps, and you know these guys actually, you know, trying to to keep things going. I mean, I know bid corps more offshore, but mm -hmm. um, and it's difficult. I mean, you look at all our retailers with you know the headwinds and load shedding, and and it is difficult to find pockets of value. But I think as a trader and to look at opportunities there, you know, there still are. I think there are there might be less traders actually in S, and I feel like you can you know, sort of still find some decent risk reward setups, you know, yeah. pay attention to your 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 charts and, and really actually find some pockets of value where you can get exposure. Mm -hmm. I think things also move, you know, I think when you, if we do get a massive weaker dollar and you do get emerging markets back in play, I mean, you, you know, there are some great, um, great opportunities there. And I think, um, you know, if you know your stocks and you, you know, your, um, you know, how they trade, um you can yeah i think there's some 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 decent opportunities still yeah. in the space yeah. and i think the commodities also i mean that's um you know they they really have been flung around this year uh and i think they co will continue to so the, the beauty of it is that we can play the long and short so, yeah. you know yeah. so we're not sort of married to two things but i'm getting back to the liquidity side it is a bit worrying and you do really have to be patient and um, you know wait for those setups and not get involved and and sit and sit on your hands a bit. That that was the next thing I wanted to ask you about it is the patience and sitting on your hands. I mean, and you mentioned um, the word over trading a few moments ago. Mm. It's it's something that I think a lot of people battle with. They think, oh, well, you, you know, you're a trader, therefore you need to be trading. You need to be doing something, and otherwise, if you're not 
actively doing something in the market, you know, you're not really fulfilling your time. Now, how do you manage that? Because as you know, you know, you've got to look for the right setups, wait for the right setups. And in in many cases, trading is is actually a game of waiting, but it can be yeah. quite difficult because this market tries to pull you in all the time. So how do you yes. manage that? Ah, uh, geez. I mean, it's uh, I think it's something that has to be constantly improved on. Um, I think, Goth, uh, you know, waiting you know, waiting for your entries. I think you often there are days, I think, especially maybe over the last, you know, three months of the start, there's, there's, there are days where I actually do nothing. Mm. You know, I have to actually go. And it is painful because <laughs> you sit there and you go, geez, uh, you know, you're looking at the bills and you're looking at all these other pressures around you and you're going, you know, what am I doing here? But but actually looking at that and, and, and maybe even, uh, I would say, scaling down. So I would say my position sizing definitely, you know, over the last little while would would be a bit smaller, especially on days where you, you know, you're figuring it out and trying to actually find out where where the game is and where where you can where you can trade. I think people must respect cash at the moment. I think cash or just sitting square is is actually, you know, a place that yeah. that you can you can you can reassess and and come from a more of a, a position because when you're in a trade, you, you know, you've already put you put your foot in there and you know, unless you you are testing the waters in small size, um I would say that you you really need to be protective of your capital. And um, I mean, I, I guess for me, uh, I I pay a lot of attention to to refining, you know, my journaling. So I journal a lot. So so basically collecting data, a lot of data on my trades daily. And to once I can see the data is improving, and I can see my trades are improving, then I can feel that okay, this is now our time to trade. Until that data improves, I won't trade. You know, until I see myself sort of putting runs in the board slowly, um, I, I, I won't trade. So get, I, I think it's, um, it is, it is something that you, 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 you pick up over time though. I think it is something that, you know, t- hours behind the screen and that is, you know, my job, um, you know, you manage to find uh, that, that, you know, you, you wake up and you're like, sure, actually I'm, I'm quite grateful. I didn't trade today. Very, very interesting yeah. to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And, and and also interesting to hear what she's doing in that time when you're not actively trading. So you say journaling is a big thing. And it's something I've, yeah. I've spoken I about with a, a lot of yeah. previous guests yeah. about journaling and the importance of journaling. Yeah. Can yeah. you give us just a bit of an idea of what type of stuff you put into that journal? So, I so you know, I, the journaling for me is, you know, in the it's journaling, collecting data, and then sort of your preparation. And then working those those three things. So so in terms of journaling, what I'll journal is whether I've executed an A plus setup. So I'd have different three different types of setups: an A plus setup, an, an A setup, and then a B setup. Um, I, you know, those are the three ones, and I would determine how I've traded or executed on those trades. Um, if I've been, if I have, um, and it's assigned sort of a value to each one. And then record that uh, and, and see how many of those I've done. And, and the outcome of those results would sort of dictate, um, you know, where, where, where I'm at and whether my confidence is getting better or if it's getting worse. Um, and so I guess it's, it's being quite self-aware of what you're doing out there. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's sort of my, my, the, the way I put things together. I think it's, it is, it is difficult. And I just think it is, it, it's something about, you know, everyone talks about it over and again, this sort of a cliche, but to, to have that edge is one thing, but to keep refining it as the market evolves is another thing. You know, I think you have to constantly keep refining and, and changing things with the market because the market at the moment is changing constantly. Um, and I think that's where you'll see, or we've seen that. I think a lot of the fluff when we spoke last time about guys getting into day trading and stuff, a lot of those, uh, you know, fluffy day traders where we could, you know, just be buying dips and, you know, having a bit of a laugh, um, you know, sort of out the window. And I think they've been, you know, taken out the system. So yeah. now I think it's the real guys who've tested the metal now who, who are who are the ones that, um, that are about. So, yeah, yeah it is quite... Um, 
What, 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 what would you say in this interesting point? What do you think the, the, the guys that have stuck it out? Because you're right. I mean, the, the last time we spoke, um, there were guys posting their PL on Twitter oh. and bra- bragging about things. And it had been such an easy you yeah. know, period from, say, 2001 through till the end of, of um, well, throughout 2021, I suppose, and 2020 yeah. Yeah. even. It was an easy time. Markets just went up. You buy the dip. Now, those guys, if you, if you followed that philosophy throughout 2022, like you said, you've been taken to the woodshed. Um, <laughs> so the guys that have that have stuck oh, it out through yeah. through this time and are still managing to trade, I mean, what's what have they done yeah. differently, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of them, I think, just have you know clearly been able to adapt and adjust their their, their trading systems and 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 processes uh, accordingly to to, to market mm-hmm. conditions. I think a lot of guys that have have been around, you know, it, during this time, sort of need to you know um, keep keep getting better and, and and knowing when they're strong, when they when they when things are going well, and they're confident, and when they're not. Um, I you know. I, I'm sure. I, th- I think I've seen a lot of Twitter handles disappear <laughs> for the last little while yeah. <laughs> with these guys sort of pushing themselves. Um, you know, sort of showing how good they are. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think a lot of guys. It's adapting, Garth. You know, like mm. uh, it's and and especially now, you 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 know, we, we've said the narratives of changing all the time. Um, the, the, you know, there's so many guys that are sort of. Um, you know, get, get coming with you know, new the new flows every single day have been been absolutely crazy, mm. and uh, well, we just adjust accordingly. Yeah, are you 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 mentioned data right? And 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 I'm curious to ask this question now of you. You've you've obviously probably got data on this, um, but if you look back over the last year, do you know roughly what percentage of your trades are winners versus losers? Uh, and I, I know we s- didn't prep this question beforehand. No, it's just something that's come to my mind now because you, t- you said you've got data and it's always something that I I'm do, curious of. You know, because I think yeah. there's often this perception out there that good traders, yeah. you know, have a majority of the time they're making money. And in reality, that's very often not the case. So do you have stats on that? I do. For yourself? And currently, I'm actually at 58%. 58% uh, winners. 58% winners at the moment, which I'm okay. quite proud of. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exceptional, because, actually. With, because, I mean I, I, th- I mean, I have been trading a little bit less. I think my, my, my I mean, I have been trading less. Um, so my activity has been a bit low, but I, my strike rate has been a, a lot better. And I, of those 58%, um, you know, some of them, I have pushed A plus setups. So they, mm. they actually have turned into some some quite uh, decent, decent winners. Um, and I think... Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's a lot better. I think towards the end of last year, so that's that's going. That's the last three months. But I think towards the end of last year, I was only in the forties, around yeah. the forties, forty-five percent. So you know, that was also the gauge for me to slow down and to not, you know, trade as much until I could get myself. Ideally, I like to, you know, stay over fifty. Sure. You know, yes, to, to, and of to, course, to, then to the, the the other thing, then of course, is 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 risk to reward or win win percentage versus yes. losing percentage. Do you have stats on that? Um, yeah, my my win ratio. I you know I've 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 got over the last two months. I think I've got the is is sixty percent. So. So what about so, a sixty to sixty percent win ratio? But 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 what I'm saying is sorry, not the win to loss ratio. What I'm saying is like your um risk to reward ratio. So so in other oh, risk words, rewards. You, sorry, yeah, so, 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 so yeah. you you said you've got fifty eight percent winners and obviously forty two percent losers. So, yeah, yeah. so, 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 so what are you making the, on the, the risk reward? Ratio. I don't. I actually don't have the data on me. I haven't okay. been actually watching a lot of my risk reward plays okay. at the moment. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, but I mean, I, would you say that? Because I mean, you know, a lot of guys say, "Oh, you know, you're looking for two to one risk reward ratio." Um, yeah, and, I mean, and, that's, I mean that, that's, that, that's that often I think is uh, is is a, obviously it's a it's, it's a quite, aspiration, but it's quite high. It's quite ambitious. Yeah, 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 it is. I mean, I I think you know, it, it, looking at you know risk reward, I think you know anything you know risking maybe like one to three or something like that. I think also you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's just I often I often think about it and I think, well, ideally, let's just say I'm, you know, risking one R on the yeah, on every yeah. trade and you want to yeah. you aim for two R on your winners. But I think yeah. what a lot of guys forget is that many in, trades end up being a scratch trade. And it's yeah. neither, you know, you're yeah. not making the two R, but you're not losing the one yeah. R on the losers. Yeah. You know, you, you scratch trade. Now your overall 
uh, overall risk to reward ratio when you average it all out comes you know somewhere in the middle like a, like a 1.3 yeah. or a 1.5 to 1 yeah, uh, yeah. so i just was wondering whether yeah. you have any of those sort of numbers because it's it's not i know to try and you know we mm. can aim for a one to two or a one to three yeah. risk reward ratio it's not always easy to achieve no, that. so i just wondered no, whether you is, had it's... those stats no okay yeah and and let's go back to the personal stuff you've you mentioned you've had a little boy so congratulations <laughs> that's yeah, uh exciting news yeah. um i really, i can yeah. only wish you all of the best i i have thank two you. little boys of my own they're now nine years old and six years old and fantastic but boy Amazing. do they change yeah. your life they change your life and like it's you said of- yeah, sleep is a luxury especially in these early years yeah. like you're going through right yeah. now How's that changed your uh, your ability to trade from a you know from a I don't know non distracted mind perspective? Yeah, mindset? I mean it's. <laughs> I think it you know as I said I've kept alluding to that of you know slowed down a little bit over the last two three months, um, but it's certainly yeah I think it's um, it's 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 allocating time and I think you know kids open up the world you know yeah. um, so I'm. I think it's just your your focus shifts quite quite a lot, and you know there's there's a seismic shift inside of you because everything you know sort of changes. There's a lot more purpose, I guess, to everything yeah. now. Yeah. Um. Uh, but I think yeah, I, I think more in t- importantly is is allocating time and making sure that you know that I am focused when I'm trading, um, and uh, you know, and sort of allocating certain times of the day to 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 where we where, where you want to you know be involved um but yeah i think it is uh, still early days um but um i think you know paying quite a lot of attention to to yourself being in a good state of mind mm-hmm. when you do get behind the screen um so you're quite focused um and not sort of uh, too frailing around the side or, or being able to sort of identify that to to say like okay cool i'm you know, I didn't have a great night's sleep. The baby's up all night. Maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, be be going gun for leather here. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I think it is it is challenging, but I think it's also, you know, sort of, you know, knowing yourself and knowing your your sort of um, your state of mind to be able to enter trades and, and be confident in them. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you at the moment trade from home, or do you actually go into an office to trade? Uh, I do, I, I I do half off. So I do, I go into an office, but I, I start, I usually start the morning. I mean, you know, these early mornings and this, yeah. yes. <laughs> I wait for the clocks to change, start there. And then I do go into an office um, at sort of about 10, 11 o'clock. And I do a bit of the afternoon and, and the closing session there. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. No, just yeah. The reason I ask is because I know, I mean, I, I've traded from home all the, all the time and I know having kids in the house yeah. and it is, they, yeah, they, it don't, is they don't always respect the boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really understand uh, no. the, the trading. No, no, they don't. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to just ask you something else now off the topic, but um, algos. <clears throat> uh, there yes. are mixed views out there on algos in the market. And I know there are algos in mm. South Africa, just like there are everywhere else. Mm. They've been around for mm. quite some mm. time now. Some guys, particularly day traders that I have known through over the throughout the years, really hate the algos they just you know it's made the game so much more difficult um what what is your perspective on that jeez i mean so i think it's uh they are really they're sort of just part of the ecosystem i've 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 sort of you know try to work out and just be understand that there are like sort of um animals in the room you know you, you need to just know how they work and you need to be aware of them and understand that they can overshoot so far so that you can get these absolutely rogue buy program, sell program. But if you know that, um, you know, that you can use them in your favor. So for example, if you do have a, um, a computer, just keep bidding up, bidding up, bidding up, bidding up, you can almost, you know, you can work that computer to a silly, silly price and you can prepare if you know that the risk reward <laughs> I'm talking about it, is in your favor, that you can actually sell it and, and know that it, and be aware that it's just an algo computer. So you can use, these algos um, in your favor. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's it, it comes back to experience and being able to, to identify and know that it's, you know, that there's not like news out or something like that, that it is just an algo. Um, and I think you can effectively actually use them in your favor. Mm. Um, I think there are quite, quite there, there are things that, you know, we in this day and age of, you know, AI now, and, you know, we have to sort of, be able to, to adapt to these things accordingly. But I think, 
you can definitely find a way to use them um, in the market. And I think as much as they cause a bit of havocs, provided that you're not, you know, you're aware of them and you know what they're doing. Um, mm. So that you know that, you know, there will be a VWAP algo that will take things certainly and then they just drop out of thin air. Yeah. I mean, I think you've seen some of these things. They will just sure. take a price ridiculously and then completely drop into thin air. That, that you know that you can get your timing right and you can enter the trade. I mean, we're talking day trading here, so it's sure. not, uh, yeah. it's, it's very much on the day. Um, and that you can actually profit from them. So you, you can you can really find them, um, you know, especially in some of the thinner stocks. And I think there are a lot of these sort of black box run programs that, that you know, these guys trade out of Guernsey and things like that. And they, they do a lot of the volume on the JSC. Mm. Uh, and uh, they are definitely around. And, um, yeah, I mean, we we just try to use them to our, to our benefit instead of, uh, you know, jumping in the way. I think the big thing is when they do come that you get out the way because they they are quite aggressive um, yeah. on both sides. So I mean, would you argue that, that that they just aid liquidity in the market? Um, and Because uh, uh, I know yeah, there's mixed, I would there's say, mixed views yeah. on this. Yeah, there, there's mixed. They, they, yeah, but, you know, they do distort pricing. So, mm. and, and, and the, you know, they'll take something to a price where, where there is liquidity. So, for example, if you've got a big offer or bid in a certain price, they will go for that you know they they literally charge for that price and you know that that's what they're coming for um but yeah i think it's um i mean we see it you, you see it a lot now i mean i think you even see it uh i mean i'll talk about smps and stuff like that, but in, in the zero those od um zero dts yeah the yeah where, zero days to expiry yeah, so options like they're, they're, yeah. they're, you know these guys come at you see these big moves at the end of the day where it's just you know computer forced forced buying or forced selling, mm -hmm. uh, it's obviously different with equities. But but you, I do feel that you can use them to your advantage. And if they're there, that means yeah, they do bring a bit of liquidity too. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and AI, you talked about that. You mentioned AI. I mean, do you ever worry that AI is going to come and they're going to just take make this game harder for us as traders, and that it's? Oh, well, you know, I I'll, certainly I'll... think. I, you know, it's something that I've thought about over and over, and I, I definitely think it is something that you know you, you need to sort of, you know, be very aware of and embrace. And and I wouldn't say embrace because I mean some of it's the Chat GPT and those things I don't think are particularly beneficial to our society from mm. learning, like yeah. <laughs> as yeah. kids and growing yeah. up. Okay. However, um, I think AI is yeah. I mean, I think it's something that we you know, we need, we need to know sort of how it works and I'm not going to be wanting to, to see if it, you know, benefits trading and you can get better as a trader to use it as an aid, you know, something that can try and help you, mm -hmm. you know, maybe picking up patterns quicker or, you know, being able to like sort of see, you know, where, where, where you can actually have some decent uh, opportunities in the market. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little bit, um, it's something that I think will, will come a lot faster. I mean, we've seen how quickly things are coming to the to fruition. I think it could be something that could be quite a big part of, 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 of things going forward. But um, yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't take the trading or the day trading way. But um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. All right. I mean, we 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 getting towards the end of our lot of time. I just got one or two more questions. Um, when it comes to drawdowns. On your account, and I think this is probably quite relevant now. And a lot of a lot of guys I deal with are suffering with drawdowns in their in their accounts lately because the environment's changed. It's been tough. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of cross currents. And if you haven't been careful about managing your risk to reward or your your, your, your risks rather, um, it's quite easily that you you find yourself in a drawdown. I mean, if you get into that situation, how do you deal with it? And and first of all, obviously, I mean, the, the aim is not to have any deep drawdowns, of course. But I mean, have you got a like an, a cutoff level or max drawdown where you say, "Listen, I'm you know this ain't working for me right now. I need to step away." Yeah, I mean, God, there are not many books written about drawdowns and, no. and losses and things like that. It's all, yeah, all it's about not, you know, not what the guys, not what the guys want to hear. No, I suppose those kind of books wouldn't no, sell much. No, it's not, and it's it's quite. <laughs> And it's quite like, yeah, I mean, you can get into these dark places. So, uh, you know, and I sort of, so for example, I, I mean, I think as I said, like I'm trying to focus on, you know, keeping, you know, data and journaling and and, and doing all those things, types of things. But I think having a big drawdown, I think, um, you know, definitely affects you mentally. Um, mm. 
And I think it's something that, you know, you, you, um, you know, to come back from, I think you just need to sort of work out what capital is at risk or what, uh, what are you prepared to, what is your time horizon, um, you know, in terms of getting back onto the horse um, and are you, you know, are you really, you know, ready to, to, to come, come back? I think a lot of guys, you know, sort of just reload their accounts or their, you know, yeah, put money back into the accounts and they're back on or where they're actually not fit enough or mentally mm-hmm. there to be able to be back in the, on the main stage. Um, so, you know, for me, I think uh, during, you know, tough periods or, or times where your confidence is low, I think it is, you know, going, getting back to your basics, uh, you know, sizing down quite a bit, um, you know, and toggling with your, your, your trade uh, plan and your, your, your system to make sure that, that, you know, you are um, confident enough not to blow up again. Um but yeah, drawdowns, and then I think I think with 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 those, I think you need to really keep quite tight about what percent or what you're allocating. You know, what percent are you prepared to lose on a trade? You know, so if 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 these things, you know, if you can try and not make things about yourself because <laughs> you get quite personal, and try yeah. and make it about the market a bit more, um, then maybe you know these drawdowns you can stop because uh, I think a lot of of trading is it becomes personal and it becomes about yourself sure and it's you know it's not really about the market so so to get yourself back into that position you know it's it's it is a a case of you know going back to what your your systems and knowing that they work and that you can trust them and you you know you can be confident and execute mm. accordingly mm. and seeing the long game I guess yeah okay the long game and uh Physiologically, I know we, you, you know, last time we spoke, you you mentioned exercise and you know the importance of sleep and all of this. I mean, I, I don't want to rehash what we've already talked about <laughs> in the previous podcast, yeah. but of course, yeah. your uh, you know, like sleep <laughs> is maybe one of those yeah. physiological aspects that you're perhaps not getting as much of right now as what you used to get. What else? Yeah. I mean, exercise, uh, if yeah, eating think, well, you know, eating nutrition. quite clean. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think eating quite clean. I mean, we've, we've spoken about it before, you know, this is, this is a contact sport, this trading, and it's <laughs> something that, you know, you out on the field there and, if you're not uh, if you're not fit and you're not uh, ready to play, you're going to get beaten. Mm. Um, yeah, I think for me, it's you know just it, I do have to allocate you know 45 minutes a day of a bit of exercise, and then actually you know trying to actually uh, I've been trying to you know get a bit of mindfulness meditation going. Yeah, mm. um, so you know just trying to spend 10 minutes and just be aware of where you're at, what state you're in, are you in a good state to be actually trading? You know, are you co- conscious? of how you know what's happening around you um and i think i've done more of that than you know just going out there and you know blitzing uh, a few beers and and uh and making <laughs> stress out in that regard um yeah so i i think it's you know i understand everyone's different so just working what's what's right for you i mean i've i've found my place of how i can get myself into a good state of mind at you know 6 a.m in the morning to 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 attack the market and to be able to be you know quite confident in in in, in doing so mm-hmm. okay good stuff well those 6 a.m right. days uh soon are going to turn into well 7 <laughs> 7 30 a.m yeah. days a little when, bit a little bit more yeah because i know uh i know being here in uh yeah, in the yeah. UK, like you know, we both are those the, throughout the winter here. They're actually, like five AMs. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean yeah, yeah four, it's the start. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the the yeah. SA market opens at it's at yeah. uh, seven AM seven. our yeah. time now in winter. At least yeah. that will shift to eight AM in the mm. in the summer time mm. now. And of course, we're starting to see some more daylight hours here in the UK, which feels like coming out of a long dark tunnel. For, <laughs> for those listening to this it podcast is. that don't live yeah. in the or have never been to the UK, just understand yeah. the UK winter is is something else. The Brutal. dark, it's like a long dark tunnel. So, and it can affect your mindset. I find it does. So at least yeah, we've got uh, the clocks are changing next weekend, and we've got spring on the way, and la- the Very sun's exciting. starting to shine for longer. So maybe it's uh, <laughs> also it'll be a yeah. welcome reprieve with the little one that you maybe get a little bit more sleep in the before you have to get up and Absolutely. start working. Yeah, yeah. let's hope. Let's hope God. Cool, cool, Mark. Well, that's been lovely chatting to All you right. again. All right. uh, I, I appreciate Great. your time. Thank you always. For your time. It's always yeah, real. It's always brilliant. like a, and um, and I know we Fantastic. said we'll try and 
catch up for a pint in yes. London or nearby yes. soon again. But cool. Been good speaking. Thanks for your time. Right. I really do appreciate Thank it. Thank you, bud. All right. Take care. Ciao. Cheers, bye, 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 bye. bye. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Talking With Traders, brought to you by IG, a world-leading CFD provider. We really are privileged to have such a leader in the field of online trading involved in this series. Please follow us on Facebook and engage with us there. And a reminder to make sure you subscribe to this series by clicking on the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we'd also appreciate if you'd leave a review on the app too. Till next time.